true of all cases related to celebrity crimes and etc. much more. So continue and tune in to the Podman Show once a month on YouTube. On today's episode of the Paulman Show, we're here to cover a little bit on the Michael Jackson scandal, or so as it may seem, um, to the best of knowledge that I can do to provide any information as possible. So I'm here with my guest, the most realistic journalism in journalism history. Uh, he has covered a lot of celebrity trials, including the chance that, you know, the Jerry Sandusky trial. Sorry, a little rusty there. And uh, he also did a cover his own coverage and his own opinion on the impeachment of the 45th president, Donald J. Trump, who is now the third president in history to be impeached within the House of of the States. And so, I'm going to turn to my question to Mr. Segler, who had a brief interview with both Taj Jackson, the son of Tito Jackson, and Brandy Jackson, the daughter of Jackie Jackson, of the Jackson 5, along with, you know, Tito. Sorry, a little bit hasty there. And uh, also with Charles Thompson, Thomas Mesereau, and so on. And also talk to one of Wade Robson's uh, colleagues that met Mr. Robson and has his own opinion. And now, my question to him, which is Mr. Zegler, about his knowledge and his, you know coverage and his own opinion about leaving Neverland. So, let's go to our guest, our special guest from According to Zig, Mr. John Segler. Let me go ahead and ask you um, a little bit of a question. Uh, first off, I think we all know this one is it is this. Um, how did you get involved in a, uh, I'm calling this now, a case involving Mr. Robson and Save Chuck, especially in leaving Neverland? How did I get involved with that? Yes. Well, I mean, I watched the movie like a lot of other people did, and I had a lot of people questioning me for my opinion because I had been involved in other somewhat similar cases. And at first, you know, like a lot of people, I was emotionally impacted by the movie, but then as it got deeper and deeper, I I started thinking, wait a minute, first of all, there's not a whole lot here, and second of all, Where's the other side of this story? And uh, and I soon learned that there was a much more compelling other side of the story. And I guess the key moment for me was when I happened to see a video of a um, of a short interview with Brandy Jackson uh, before the film came out where right. I learned that she had dated Wade Robson for most of, if not all, his teenage years, and she seemed exceedingly credible. She's the niece of Michael Jackson, and her story just didn't jive at all with the one that was being portrayed by Wade Robson in the film. And and then I you know, did some basic research into Wade Robson's claims, and they they just don't make any damn sense based upon his own actions, his own testimony in Michael Jackson's criminal trial. Uh, uh, They are completely consistent with somebody who changed their story long after Michael Jackson died because their career didn't go where they wanted it to and they were looking for money. And so I became very convinced very quickly that Wade Robson is not telling the truth. I didn't know for sure about James Safechuck, but but Sechuk is is the second an accuser in this group. He's the one that joined Wade Robson's lawsuit. And so if Robson's not telling the truth, it's kind of hard to, to come up with a scenario where the guy who joins his lawsuit because he saw him on the Today Show many, many, many years later after the alleged abuse, that somehow he is telling the truth. And under 
further scrutiny, Safe Chuck's story doesn't hold up either for similar but different reasons. And so I am now totally convinced that Robson and Safe Chuck are not telling the truth. Uh, and I think one of the best pieces of evidence that the film is a, is a fraud is that here HBO airs basically a five hour advertisement along with an hour long a special by Oprah Winfrey. An internationally aired five hour advertisement for new accusers to come forward and join the lawsuit, and no one does. Now, that's not possible because for this story to be true, Michael Jackson would have to be a serial sex abuser, and there should be dozens and dozens of different uh, victims out there, all of whom would be in their adult years now, and all of whom would have a huge financial interest in joining this lawsuit and humongous media cover for doing so. They would be embraced by the media. And uh, and no one did that. And so I feel very confident that uh, Robson and Safechuck are not telling the truth, and anybody who looks at it objectively will come to the same conclusion. Right. Um, and it, and uh, it pretty much sums up about the next question. But the third question I have, which uh, you mentioned Brandy, and uh, I wanted to ask you, and, and uh, it's been over the years that uh, the people in the media were saying that, oh, they didn't really care. The family members didn't care about my, their relative, and, uh, like, they just out there for money and see the assets. And which I'm, I'm going to ask you, which you did an interview with Brandy and Tosh. And um, I wanted to ask you if, you, if either you or – were they ever asked to be financial compensation for their interviews with you? Uh, gosh, no. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I interviewed Brandy uh, very soon after the film. In fact, I think I was the first person to interview her after the film. And uh, you know, not only is there there no uh, financial considerations <laughs> with regard to uh, my interviews with uh, Brandy or Taj, but it's important for people to understand that as nieces and nephews of Michael Jackson, they have no direct or even really indirect uh, uh, a way to access money from the estate. They're not paid. They're not part of his estate. They're not part of his will. They don't get money from Michael Jackson's royalties or anything like that. Now, Obviously, the Jackson brand matters to them because their last name is Jackson. But what I have found from TJ, who's another nephew, and Taj and Brandy, is that they just love their uncle. They they believe they know the truth. I found them to be very consistent, very compelling, very credible, very open, uh, very honest, sincere, uh, I, 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 to me, the most impressive thing about all of them was that they were all willing to talk about very openly the the notion that their uncle was weird and that he did things differently and that you know he may have made errors in judgment. There was there's not a there's not a situation where they have their head in the sand like a bunch of ostriches. They they know the facts. Uh, they know him. Uh, they know and in the case of Brandy and Taj. They know Wade Robson very, very well. And so I found I, I, they were a big part of why I came to the conclusion that I did. Right. And, um, like, um, there's another question that I always have in mind when I do interviews, certain certain amount of interviews that, if it's about Michael Jackson or any kind of celebrities that is involved in certain amount of problems that, that may occur involving you know, inappropriate acts with children. And I always I always wondered, that's why I always talk to the sources that really talk to the people that Michael knew and really have a talk, ask them certain questions and they're really believable, depending on, because I don't really know them. And and you met them and have an interview with them. And um, basically that's what it is to the, to the conclusion that, like, I, I don't even believe this Robson's character story because of, of like what you said, which is uh inconsistence. Well, there's a, there's a hundred different reasons not to believe Wade Robson. And, and to me, one of the most 
compelling reasons that we found in, in this investigation of the film, it hardly ever gets mentioned, is the fact that Joy Robson, his mother, who is a key, key player in all this, I mean, she's the one that instigated and facilitated the relationship between Wade and Michael Jackson. She was not just a huge Michael Jackson fan for many years, way after the alleged abuse and after his death. Most right. importantly, most importantly, after Wade goes on the Today Show, and I guess it was in May of 2013, Wade goes yeah, on yeah, the Today Show to, 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 to uh, claim to be a victim of Michael Jackson. So he goes on the Today Show. So the whole world, obviously his mother, knows that he is claiming to be a victim of Michael Jackson in horrendous fashion. And yet Joy Robson is liking pro-Michael Jackson Facebook pages after that date of, of the spring of 2013 which is highly suspicious right off the bat, but then even more suspiciously, once she finds out that we have found these these Facebook pages that she liked, she goes in and proactively, or someone does it for her, probably her, uh, proactively unlikes the same pages. Now, that to me is a pure consciousness of guilt and direct evidence of a cover-up. Because there's no way to make that make any sense. How in the world, if you really believe that your son was sexually abused by Michael Jackson, are you liking pro-Michael Jackson Facebook pages, including one that was for his birthday? I mean, it makes no damn sense. Especially then when you go and erase those likes once you know people who are trying to find out the truth of this matter uh, uncover them. That to me is the smoking gun. I mean, there's just there's no way to explain that in a rational world. Right, and um, I one of the other question. I got two more questions for you. Um, okay. Um, one is is that because of re because of that. Um, I prefer a mockumentary, if you will. Uh, that the first of all is that. Do you have any uh, uh reactions to? The judge who who first missed the missed the case of Wade and James's uh, lawsuit against uh, Mr. Jackson's estate has recent recently reversed the dismissal and given Wade and James a chance of a trial. Yeah, I don't know enough about the the legalities of it to determine whether that was a legitimate ruling or not. I'm sure the estate wasn't happy with it. I haven't delved deeply into it. Uh, but from the stand, you know, I, I'm a truth guy, you know, and so to right. me, the the only way that the truth has any chance of really coming out of here is if there's actually a trial, and and so I welcome there to be a trial. If this facilitates a trial. I think that would be fantastic. I, I even had suggested at one point, including in a, in a in a lunch meeting that I had with the the two main lawyers from the estate, I told them uh, or asked them, is it possible to just uh, to to uh, withdraw your appeals or your your objections to their lawsuit and say, hey, let's go right to trial. Because to me, I, if I was them, I would be bring it on. Because uh, e even though I, I I understand that there's a lot of disadvantages uh, to uh, in the in the in the post Me Too era, especially. Right. You know, it's not a slam dunk like it used to be. The juries might be much more willing to believe a, a baloney story. I, I have to believe that with good lawyers, with lots of resources, they're going to destroy Robson and Save Chuck. And and that would be, um, you know, to me, that that would be the best scenario. So maybe I'm being overly optimistic, but uh, I'm actually glad that that was the ruling because I'd like there to be a trial. Right. Um, I think there's one more question is that I think the question should be is that or or could be or somewhat stable form is that what is your impression about Wade and James as before or after or you just happened to see Leaving Neverland on HBO? In other words, what do I think of them as, as people or what do I think is motivating them? Yes. Well, 
I don't know if this is where you wanted me to go with this, but I do have kind of a differing opinion about That's fine. What, what what really happened here. My my opinion on what really happened here is at least I mean, obviously the money is a motivation. Okay, that, that's 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 without the money, none of this happens. But when I look at the stories of Wade and James, I find it very very interesting that these were two guys who were really pretty darn famous as children. Right. And if you look at if you look at the 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 uh, evolution of their lives. Right. So at a very at a very young age, they're not just famous. They're best buddies with Michael Jackson, the coolest man on the planet. Now that is an enormous, enormous ad- adrenaline rush for any human being, but especially a kid. And it also creates expectations for what your life is going to be that are completely and totally unrealistic. So you have these two guys who, and I, I don't think it's a coincidence that they're pretty, pretty much the two most famous, other than Macaulay Culkin, uh, and, 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 maybe, and, and maybe Webster, uh, but they, you know, they were two of the most famous kids because of their association with Michael Jackson uh, in that time period. And so, so because that Michael Jackson was the, in their minds, Michael Jackson was the best moment of their lives, right? I'm assuming they they were not sexually abused, right? So, right. So, so when so they have these huge expectations for their life, and then once Michael Jackson moves on, and then once he dies, that's all gone. And in a weird way, they start to resent Michael Jackson because he, in their minds, this is I'm not even saying this is conscious. This might be subconscious. In their minds, he took away the greatest moments of their life. And right. he didn't deliver for them the, this awesome life that they expected when they were children. And now, in order to get that same adrenaline rush that they got at 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, it's, it's literally impossible. Their lives cannot possibly measure up to that. And so... In a weird way, they start to resent Michael Jackson. They start to blame him for this predicament in their life. He's no longer around, so he cannot help them. In the case of Wade Robson, he loses out on the the one job that he could have gotten from the Jackson estate, which was this choreographer of, of the Circus Soleil show in Las Vegas. So they they have no careers to protect, for all intents and purposes, Michael Jackson and the Jackson State can't do anything for either of them. So this is their their revenge slash adrenaline rush. So and I, I really think being in this movie was was an adrenaline rush for them. Uh they they got to be back on stage. They got to have people paying attention to them. Uh you know, you become an attention junkie when you're uh, a star as a kid and, and Michael Jackson's best buddy, uh, and, and this was the only way they could get that, that fix. This was a fix for them. Again, without the money motivation, they probably don't pursue it to this level because there's, you know, there's, there's some risk and embarrassment involved. But right. uh, I, I really do believe that, that uh, and I, talk, I told the lawyers about this, and, you know, one of the lawyers, I think, like somewhat changed his mind about what their motivation was, and the way he described it was, they expected more. They were promised more in their lives, and they didn't get it. And right. now this is this is their revenge, and uh, so that's that's what I think is partially motivating them. Right. Uh, first off, uh, thank you so much for joining, and. Uh, and I hope that you have a good uh, New Year as well. You too. Take care. And this includes our our episode of The Palman Show. So please tune in for more episodes like this on YouTube on The Vibe Nation.